Hey, this is the Emmanuel's Library and now you can listen to the preview of today's recommendation. Specifically, you could still OD or get pinned to the wheel and charbroiled in your driver's seat, or for that matter, blow your own brains out. But the one place where you will not suck your last breath is underwater. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know if this is at all related, but I always had a thing for the ocean. Usually kids will get fixated on naming every make and model of dinosaur or what have you. With me, it was whales and sharks. Even now, I probably think more than the normal about water. Floating in it. Just the color blue itself. And how for the fish, that blue was the whole deal. Air and noise and people and our all-important hectic nonsense. A minor irritant, if even that. I've not seen the real thing, just pictures, and this hypnotizing screensaver of waves rearing up and spilling over on a library computer. So what do I know about ocean? Still yet to stand on its sandy beard and look it in the eye. Still waiting to meet the one big thing I know is not going to swallow me alive. Dead in the heart of Lee County, between the Rue Lynn Coal Camp and a settlement people call Right Poor, the top of a road between two steep mountains is where our single wide was set. I wasted more hours up in those woods than you'd want to count, alongside of a boy named Maggot, wading the creek and turning over big rocks and being mighty. I could go different ways, but definitely a Marvel hero as preferable to DC, Wolverine being a favorite, whereas Maggot tended to choose Storm, which is a girl. Excellent powers and a mutant, but still. Maggot was short for Matt Peggett, related obviously to the screaming lady at my birthday party, his grandmother. She was the reason Maggot and I got to be next door neighbor wild boys for a time. But first, he'd need to get born, a little out ahead of me, plus getting pawned off on her while his mom took the extended vacay in Goochland Women's Prison. We've got story enough here to F up more than one young life, but it is a project. Famously, this place where we lived was known to be crawling with copperheads. People think they know a lot of things. Here's what I know. In the years I spent climbing around rocks and all the places a snake likes to lie, not one copperhead did we see. Snakes, yes, all the time. But snakes come in kinds. For one, a common spotty kind called a water devil that's easily pissed off and will strike fast if you make that mistake but it's less of a bite than a dog deals out or a bee sting. Whenever a water snake gets you, you yell all the curse words you've got stored up in your little skull closet. Then wipe off the blood, pick up your stick, and go on being an adaptoid, thrashing on the mossy stump of evil. Where if a copperhead gets you, that's the end of whatever you planned on doing that day, and maybe with that part of your hand or foot, period. So it matters a lot what you're looking at. If you care, you'll learn one thing from another. Anybody knows a sheepdog from a beagle or a whopper from a Big Mac? Meaning dogs matter and burgers matter, but a snake is a frickin' snake. Our holler was full of copperheads, said the cashiers at the grocery whenever they saw our address on mom's food stamps envelope. Said the school bus driver day in, day out snapping the door shut behind me like she's slamming it on their pointy snake faces. People love to believe in danger, as long as it's you in harm's way, and them saying, bless your heart. Years would come and go before I got to the bottom of all the heart blessing, and it was not entirely about snakes. One of mom's bad choices, which she learned to call them in rehab, and trust me, there were many, was a guy called Copperhead. Supposedly, he had the dark skin and light green eyes of a melungeon and red hair that made you look twice. He wore it long and shiny as a penny, said my mother, who clearly had a bad case. A snake tattoo coiled around his right arm where he'd been bit twice, first in church as a kid trying for manhood among his family's snake-handling men, second time later on, far from the sight of God. Mom said he didn't need the tattoo for a reminder. That arm aggravated him to the end. 
He died the summer before I was born. My messed up birthday surprised enough people to get the ambulance. To enjoy these audiobooks and many more ebooks, you can use the links on the description where you can have 30 days free trial of this content and many more. If after listening to this ebook, you don't want to continue with the trial, you can cancel at any time and you will have enjoyed to this content and many more totally free. So what are you waiting for? See you in the next recommendation.